either. Oh, Bob, that's so nice. Okay, I remembered to record you. <laughs> so now, no swear words. Your your peers may be watching. So we're supposed to be quiet. Fine yogis. Yeah. Surely you behave. <laughs> Surely so, you behave. Oh, I'll try now, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> If you have two blocks, put one block between your feet and one block between your knees. And bring your hands to your heart and just start to just breathe naturally. And as you're breathing, you might start thinking about pushing your feet down into the floor starting to lift your heart up, lift your sternum up and, and notice if you're hinging forward a little bit, maybe shift your shoulders back over your hips. With those clouds out there, this room is just so dark compared to everybody else's. It's nice for, I don't know if the beach was better or this. It seems like I'm in the dark from my screen. One more deep inhale. If you have your eyes closed, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> and guard your senses. Yes, and guard your senses. So let's talk about your breath. One thing that yoga can help us do is shift perspective. So, and I didn't believe it at first, but the longer I practice, the more I realize how important it really is. So. We usually think of breathing as inhale and then exhale, inhale, exhale. But I want you to start to shift your perspective today and start thinking of exhale. And then when you think you've already exhaled the little bit of breath I gave you warning about, maybe push a little bit more air out and then inhale. Exhale. When you think you're done exhaling, use your abdominal muscles, your rib muscles to push a little bit more air out and then inhale. <laughs> exhale. <laughs> what <a> mute that. <laughs> I'm going to mute everybody just in case. Good idea. Your, your pets are. <laughs> you can. Re Bye, Tyler. <laughs> Good, so we're exhaling. Exhale a little more. When you think when you think all the air's out, say really. And think about, I haven't went swimming in years, but Wendy goes swimming a lot. And sometimes when you're underwater, it feels so good and you're swimming and you want to stay longer and you blow the bubbles out, you blow the bubbles out. <clears throat> Imagine that's what you're doing here as you exhale and try to push a little more air out like you're Blowing the bubbles out, and then when you're ready, inhale again. So moving at your pace, exhaling. When you think you're finished, exhaling a little more. So what we're doing is creating a vacuum in your lungs. And you may notice when you push all the air out and then you take an inhale, it's almost like, <gasps> It's like you did blow bubbles underneath water and then you come up from under the water and you're like, <gasps> almost like you're gasping for air. If you're not feeling that as you exhale, try to exhale a little more, explore that. And when you start having that feeling almost like you're gasping or coming up out of water, what's happening is we're creating a vacuum in our lungs by pushing all the air out and then the atmosphere rushes the air back in. So when you open your mouth, it's like, <gasps> and the atmosphere pushes that air in. And the atmosphere is stronger than our inhale. I don't know if that makes sense. So the pressure from the atmosphere pushing in can stretch our lungs open even more than when we take our deepest inhale on our own. And so as you're pressing all the air out on your exhale as much as you can, if you start feeling like, oh, I don't like this, it's not making me feel good, it shouldn't. But if that happens, then just breathe naturally. But otherwise, push all the air out and take three more breaths like that, exhaling, 
Feel your abdominal muscles hug in, your ribs hug in, pushing the air out. It's like you're squeezing your tube of toothpaste. And one more. I always run out of toothpaste and I'm trying to squeeze that last bit out because I forgot to get it at the store. And after you press all of your air out, then inhale again. And then lower your arms by your side. So when I'm teaching you breathing exercises, sometimes it can make you feel tense or uncomfortable. You can always just breathe naturally and ignore me. Guard your senses. <laughs> so let's make a letter U with your shoulders. Roll forward and up. And exhale, maybe sigh as you shrug down. And then shrug your shoulders back and up. Now make sure that you're being safe. You're sighing out through your mouth. I don't want you to put any droplets on anybody. Roll forward and up and then shrug back and up. One more forward and up and down and then shrug your shoulders back and up and down. And then rest your hands on your lap, shift your shoulders back over your hips, lift up through the crown of your head and look over your right shoulder just till you start to feel a stretch. Keep feeling the connection with your feet pressing down. Deep inhale, sitting strong and long. If you have blocks, feel your foot block, your knee block squeezing. Deep inhale, keep rolling your left shoulder back. Oh yeah, we're exhaling first. Oh, see how quickly I went back to my habit. Maybe look out of the corner of your eyes and then slowly look forward. Exhale and then inhale. So continuing to shift our perspective now as we're exhaling and inhaling, you don't have to press every drop of air out each time. That was just a exercise at the beginning, but still trying to keep that flow of exhale, inhale. So as you exhale, lift up through your heart, shoulders nice and wide, and then inhale, look over your left shoulder. Exhale, looking out of the corner of your eyes. Inhale, pushing your feet down, lift up through your heart. Notice what your right shoulder's doing. Keep trying to roll it back. And then slowly look straight ahead. Lower your arms down by your side. Shrug your shoulders up by your ears like you're saying, I don't know. Exhale as you roll forward and down. And then inhale up. Exhale back. Inhale up. It kind of turns into itself, forward and down. Inhale up. Exhale, back and down. Inhale up. Exhale, forward and down. Inhale up. Exhale, back and down. And then if you have a block, you could take your block and rest back on your block, put it way up between your shoulder blades, and rest back in your chair. If you don't have a block, just lay back and, and exaggerate lifting the front of your chest up. Check in with your breathing. Exhale. And inhale. Just breathing naturally again. Exhaling. Not that exhaling first is naturally, but you don't have to push all the air out and then inhale. Exhale. And inhale. And then bring your arms down by your side. Keep laying back against your block. If you're in the floor, you could lay on the floor and Reach your arms out and up. I know, I hope that snow is a long way away. I think they were getting some in Colorado. Exhale, slowly lower down. But when I do this, I feel like my arms are making snow angels. Oh no, I gotta have you inhale up here first before I can say exhale. Cause we need to have our arms up when we inhale and then we'll start exhale. <laughs> Now 
and inhale. Feel your abdominal muscles, your ribs, your chest, your shoulders expand. Exhale slowly, controlling your breath, trying to resist gravity. Gravity pulls us down quick. So it took me a long time to really understand that, that inhale as I'm lowering my arms down. They're working too as I resist gravity. And then rest your hands on your lap. And exhale. And inhale. And you're moving at your own pace, so I'm loosely guiding you. If you're breathing the exact opposite of me, just laugh about it because it's hard for me to even teach like this. So it's my practice too. One thing that I'm noticing personally is it's forcing me to focus even more, not allowing me to drift off of my little anecdotals or whatever. So exhale and inhale. And go ahead and bring your block with you. If you have one and place your block between your knees. Push your feet down and reach your right arm up towards the ceiling and reach it up as high as you can. You can look up if you want. It's like you're trying to change a light bulb and sh you could even put your hand, your, your pinky finger between your neck and your shoulder as you reach up and shake your head yes. When you do that, you might feel the muscles on the side of your neck starting to do something. You could tell me no. Here comes Beth. I was thinking, I did have reminders. It's Tuesday, not Monday. One more yes. I was hoping I showed up at the right place. Hey, Beth. And then reach up, stretch up. Good. And pat yourself on the back. Massage your right arm, your right armpit. If you can, Reach your arm straight up again and sweep from your hand all the way down to your side. It's the time of year with the wind blowing, the seasons changing. This whole year has been the time of year to keep our lymphatics flowing. It's always a good time. Now bring your right arm forward and across your body and massage your right shoulder. So our lymphatics work from movement but they also work from gentle massage, our exercise, our yoga practice, our abhyanga, our self-massage, and then bring your arm down, do some big shoulder rolls one at a time. And then just pause a moment before we do the other side. You could rest back if you need to take a break Notice your right arm and shoulders. Notice the right and left side of your neck. And when everybody was doing a good job, I was talking so much I couldn't get out, but when you were reaching up, your sides were stretching too. So if you close your eyes and take an internal gaze from your armpit to your hip, you might feel a difference in the sides of your body. One more deep inhale. If you don't feel a difference, no big deal. You might notice sensation. You might notice non-sensation. And then push your feet down. If you've got blocks, squeeze them and reach your left arm up. Reach up like you're trying to get a light bulb. Stretch up there and shake your head yes. Tell me that's as high as you can reach. Deep inhales, that movement's making that muscle work right there, creating a little slack. Say, no, Shannon, I can't reach it any higher. Keep reaching up. And then, yes, one more time. Exhales, inhales. And then I bet you can reach it up higher. Reach it up. Oh, yes. And pat yourself on the back. Give that arm a break. Massage your arm, your armpit. So all these little details, I'm always saying, like, honestly, for years, I thought it was just because I wanted the pose to look perfect and be perfect. 
Now sweep your hand from your hand all the way down your armpit to your side. But we've been working our brains the whole time, which I knew as well, but it's way more important than I ever realized. And I'm going to have to give you the exact research. And go ahead and rest your arm down. This time bring both arms down by your side. Lift up through your heart. You could keep your eyes open, but you might close them as you shrug both shoulders up. Forward and down. Deep inhale, push into your feet, shrug up, back and down. Deep inhale, up. Exhale, forward and down. And then inhale, shrug up, squeeze your blocks. Squeeze your shoulder blades as you exhale, back and down. One more, up. Exhale, forward and down. And then up. Exhale, back and down. And then you can lay back on your block on the flat, maybe the more narrow level. It should feel like it's gently pressing your chest up. If you don't have a block, just lay back and lift your chest up. Shoulders wide, feel your abdominal muscles, your ribs. I'm not really a football fan, but we still have something to be proud of in this in this town. The Royals are playing, so got to get our Royal or oh, Chiefs. We got to get our Chiefs pride out. So you can continue resting as you exhale and inhale, or you could bring your arms up over your head. Take a deep inhale up there. It's hard to exhale first and then exhale as you lower down. So if you're just joining us, I was talking about shifting our perspective. Inhale as you reach up for your abdominal muscles, your ribs, your chest expand. Thinking about the exhale coming first and then the inhale. Inhale, it's kind of like infinity when I do that with my hands, it kind of turns into itself. Exhale, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? One more, inhale, feel your abdominal muscles, your ribs, lay back on your block, reach up and exhale. And rest your hands on your lap again, start Focusing on your breath, notice any changes. It takes between 20 and 30 seconds for our brain to process what just happened. And then go ahead and shift forward. And one thing I learned this spring, and I think it makes us all equal, we should ask uh, Dr. Lynch about this, but according to what I studied, so our interoception does not have myelination. So you and I are the same in that. I, if you have MS, you know, there's, you know, there's scars on your myelin, but if you don't have myelination, there's no scars in there. So I was like, well, wait, that means Bob and I, it still takes us both 20 or 30 seconds to feel it. So I thought that was interesting. I need to confirm that with Dr. Lynch. Okay, bring your hands together at your heart. Lift up long through your spine. Notice if you're leaning forward a bit, see if you could shift your shoulders back over your hips. And notice if you push your palms, spread your fingers and push your palms as you lift up through your heart. Your chest muscles, your pectoralis muscles are lifting your, your spine along with your back and abdominal muscles. Take a deep inhale. If it's okay for you, rotate to your right and push into your left foot. That's your exhale. And then inhale forward, long, strong spine. Exhale, keep pushing your palms as you rotate left. Good. 
Inhale, forward, keep lifting up through your heart. Try to keep your shoulders wide as you rotate right. Push left. Whew, that took all my breath. And then inhale, wide shoulders, push your palms. Exhale, left, push right. Good, one more, finish strong. Deep inhale, ears over your shoulders, rotate right. Push left, push your left foot, your left hip. And then inhale forward, long, strong spine, rotate left, and push right, squeeze your box. Inhale forward and make some gentle waves with your hands. Good, and then do reverse waves. I don't know if I can do that on a Tuesday that feels like a Monday. <laughs> Shifting that perspective again. Hmm, glad infinity's taking care of itself. Okay, set your blocks down. If you, my mother likes to use her block when she does her hip circles. So if you like that, don't let me stop you. You could keep it there. I think everybody needs a block break by now. Give yourself a knee massage. Take some deep inhales and exhale. Inhale, massage the back of your knees, and exhale. And then bring your hands forward, bring your heart forward, draw your elbows back as you push your feet down, feel your legs trying to work. And exhale, cat's breath. Push as much air out as you can. Deep inhale as you shift forward. Exhale. If nobody's going to get droplets on them, stick your tongue out, cross your eyes. One more deep inhale. And then as you inhale, push your feet down. And I'm pushing my hands like in the middle of my thighs, so not too far on my knees. You could press farther back on your hips, but I find my push right in the middle of my leg and I'm pushing really hard. So I'm trying to keep my feet and my hips anchored down. And you're going to rotate to the right, push left, and try to keep your spine strong and line, like you're going around the edges of your baking or your mixing bowl. Deep inhales and exhale. Does anybody in here do gluten-free cooking? I've got to switch. I've got to make the switch. If I'm gonna keep eating what I've been eating, I gotta get over to gluten-free. As you inhale, push your feet down, push your hips down and go the other way. My brain longevity training is telling me. So it's reminding me, yeah, I need to give it another whirl. I can never stick with it forever, but I figured if I could stick with it from now till the holidays, that would be a good start. And then go ahead and shift forward. I know if I'm honest with myself over the holidays, I'll slip back again when somebody gives me a cookie, I will not say no. <laughs> so, but if, my, if I took that time, I thought, and was more gluten-free this next month or two before Thanksgiving, then I'd feel good from it. I'd feel the difference. And then if I had something not on that plan, it might make me feel icky again. And I'd be like, oh yeah, I liked feeling good. And it would make it easier to get off after the holidays, off the, the gluten and stuff again. Anyway, just talking out loud, I better get back to exhale. Try to press your air out and then inhale here. So taking a break, but doing some breath work. As you exhale, maybe draw your abdominal muscles in, hug your spine, and then inhale. And for my friends who weren't here the first time we did that, when we press all the air out, and then we take an in inhale, the atmosphere rushes air in and it actually helps our breathing accessory muscles get stronger and expands our lungs a little more. So one more exhale. And inhale. 
And then breathe naturally. Look at your toes, wiggle your toes. Bring your hands to your legs and push your feet down. Feel your legs trying to work as you push down and push yourself back up. Whew. Feel the circulation move down from your head to your shoulders. Take some deep inhales. Good job coming up slowly. If you have a block, you could grab your block. Sit up nice and strong and exhale. And then inhale, feel your shoulders wide. Now when you're exhaling, just exhale naturally. You don't have to press all of your air out. But when you inhale, think about your shoulders wide, filling up your whole body shape. Take a deep inhale, look over your right shoulder just till you start to feel a stretch. As you exhale, you might look out of the corner of your eyes a little more. As you inhale, push your feet down, squeeze blocks if you have them. Exhale, look out of the corner of your eye a little more. Inhale, feel the crown of your head lift up, your heart lift up. Exhale, maybe look out of the corner of your eye. Notice what your left shoulder is doing. As you keep looking out of the corner of your eye, your left shoulder may be going, hey, wait. So if it's doing that, try to roll your left shoulder back. Sit up nice and strong. Be curious, but be gentle. And then inhale, look straight ahead and do some shoulder rolls. And then relax your shoulders down, lift up through your heart. Try to shift your ears back over your shoulders and look over your left shoulder. If you close your eyes and move ultra slowly, you'll be starting to tune into that moment when it feels like too much on your neck. And then keep holding your right shoulder in place. Keep lifting up long and strong through the spine. Exhale, maybe look over your shoulders a little more. Inhale, lifting up through your heart. Feel your, pre your feet pressing down. Exhale, feel your navel hug in as you look a touch more. Being curious. One more deep inhale, but gentle. And then look straight ahead. Try to bring your chin back, ears over your shoulders. Lift up through your heart. As you exhale, try to let your shoulders soften even more. And then take another inhale. And as you exhale, let your right ear slowly lower towards your right shoulder. And again, if your eyes are closed, if you go really slow, you'll really start to notice when your body goes wow. And then push your left foot, your left hip down, counterbalancing yourself. Deep inhale. Sometimes I think, oh, I'm paying attention. I didn't lean over. And then I'll push into my opposite foot and I'll feel myself shift up a little. So really subtle details. Now, if you want more sensation, you can lower your left arm down. Take a few deep breaths, 20 or 30 seconds to check out what's going on there. If it feels like too much, you can put your hand back on your lap. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, gaze down towards your right armpit. Try to soften your right shoulder. If it helps, you could lower your right arm down. But sometimes I like to use my right arm to help push into my leg and help me sit upright. So whichever you need, notice what's going on here. And the next time you exhale, exhale, <laughs> and then inhale, rotate looking up and to your left. And then exhale, gazing down and to your right. So when our head's moving, it's going to challenge our, our torso stability. So notice that. Try to stabilize, but don't get too intense about it. I have to watch myself on that. If I'm really pushing, I'm like, I'm gonna hold my body really still. Then I can't breathe at all. And I can barely move my neck because it gets tense. So we're trying to find that middle path. 
trying to find steadiness. Next time you look at your right armpit, bring your right hand to the side of your head. Gently guide your head back up. Release your arm down. Do independent shoulder rolls. So want, shrug your shoulder up and back. Uh, then the other one up and back. Sometimes when we focus on one, we can get a bigger range of motion in one and kind of open that one shoulder up a little more. Now, lay back on your chair for a moment with or without your block, whichever level you want your block on and just take a rest. Exhale and inhale. Exhale. So even when we're not pushing the air all the way out every time, we're still maybe exhaling a little more and getting a little bit of that atmospheric help. Notice your right neck, your right shoulder, your left side of your neck and shoulder without judgment. One should feel different. We've stretched one side. The other side was working while we stretched that side. So just notice the subtleties and know that that's our brain work. Our brain is like, whoa, what's it's processing right now. Now bring your arms down by your side. You can keep resting if you need or reach both arms out and up. Feel your abdominal muscles, your ribs, your chest expand. And then exhale, slowly lower down, noticing your right arm and shoulder, your neck. Reach your arms out and up, feel your abdominal muscles, your ribs, your chest expand, lay back on your chair, your blocks, exhale slowly resisting gravity. One more, reaching up, feel your abdominal muscles, your ribs, your chest opening, expanding, and exhale, slowly lowering down. Noticing your right shoulder, your arm, your neck, and even your sides as you rest your hands on your lap. Exhaling and inhaling. One more deep inhale, savor your rest. And then shift forward again. If you have blocks, you could bring them. If you're using a foot block, well, even if you're not, try to turn your toe straight and squeeze your big toe into your block, squeeze your heel, try to spread your toes out, get a little of that cool breeze or getting outside through your toes, lift up through your heart and let your left ear slowly lower towards your left shoulder, deep, expansive inhales. So becoming ultra aware of our posture, good. I can see some of you feeling yourself lean to the left and you must be pushing into your right foot, your right hip, deep inhales, maybe lower your right arm down. Your abdominal muscles, your ribs, your chest lifting, expanding, push your right foot, your right hip down, that'll counterbalance your, your leaning to the left. Deep inhale and then gaze down towards your armpit and take a few deep breaths. You can use your left hand to help you also stay or keep your shoulders over your hips. Deep inhale. And then rotate your head looking up and to the right. And then as you exhale, slowly gaze down into your left, trying to let your shoulders be soft. Inhale, gazing up and to the right, even though your body, your core, your legs are all firm and active. Exhale, gazing down into your left. Maybe look out of the corner of your eyes and then looking up into your right. 
One more exhale as you look down into your left. Then bring your hand to the side of your head. Guide your head back up. Avoid your face and eyes, but massage the top of your head, the sides of your head, all those muscles. If you want, you could drop your block and just rest back in your chair. Massage the back of your head where the back of your head meets the back of your neck. Exhaling and inhaling all the time. Massage your ears. Why do you do that, Shannon? It feels good. It's like a full body massage. If you looked on an acupuncture ear, the whole body is represented there. Now, turn your head to your right. You're still resting back in your chair and stroke from behind your ear down the side of your neck, down to your clavicle. And it's just a gentle sweep of your fingertips, encouraging your lymphatics to flow there. And then gaze over your left shoulder, same thing. Just sweeping your hands. We had a nice big shift in weather and that can our muscles our bodies can respond to that i know the cool weather feels good especially if you have ms symptoms but it can like kind of shock our body when things change 30 20 or 30 degrees overnight now reach both arms up and pat yourself on the back and you can slide your hands like you got an itch down the, between your shoulder blades any amount that you can look forward feel your abdominal muscles your ribs your chest breathe all the way to your elbows all the way down to your toes lean your head back into your hands a little bit last days of summer gotta enjoy them and go ahead and release your arms down and rest your hands on your lap just Check in, you could close your eyes either all the way or part way. Exhaling. And inhaling. Notice any change of sensation. One more, exhale. <laughs> And then go ahead and grab your strap. Pardon me, it's finally working. I started to yawn. You can scoot your blocks over to the side and bring your strap to the ball of your right foot. If you don't have a strap, you could push your toes against the baseboard or the wall or have a care partner push your toes back. We're going to all try not to lock our knees and hold a strap in each hand. Push your, if you bend your right knee just a little bit and then push your right heel into the floor as you sit up long and you'll feel your right leg maybe start to activate. You might feel activation up through your back muscles. Draw your abdominal muscles in and then start to hinge forward. Try to keep your ears back over your shoulders. Inhale back away. And think about when you draw, when you hold the strap and pull your heart forward and your elbows back, our ego mind, our thinking mind is like, well, I got to get down there to my foot, but don't even look at your foot. Look forward. Oh, goodness. Look forward and notice how that'll keep your spine long. And you might close your eyes and notice that'll change where you feel the sensation. And it'll also keep our spine long. And so I think of this just as much of a posture work as I do a leg stretch for myself and for others. Good. And then uh, if you want, you could keep reaching your heart towards your foot or slide your right hand down your strap. Push your left hand in the middle of your left thigh. Push your foot down to lift your right leg deep. Inhale, you can lift low with a long spine. You can lift your leg up higher, but the higher you go, the more effort you're going to have to put into keeping your spine strong. So 
Find that place where you can still sit up strong, nice wide, proud chief shoulders. If you're not a Chiefs fan, sorry about that. Deep inhale. You could stay here or you could hold the strap with your left hand. And if you're on the floor, you could hold the strap with your left hand. Wherever you are, I'm going to do the in-between. Bring your right hand to your low back. Feel your left foot push down as you sit strong. Deep inhale. That's the most important part. And then exhale, rotate over your right shoulder. Keep telescoping the crown of your head up. Deep inhale. And then slowly unwind. You can remove your strap. Rest back in your chair without your block. You can let your legs windshield wiper. You might look at the coloration of your feet. Sometimes you'll see a difference. I'm not today, but the reason I looked is because I felt it. And I know you have one side that's maybe different than the other. So just note, you may not feel exactly what you feel on the other side, but when you read Matthew Sanford's book, he's paralyzed and he talks about feeling sensation, even though he can't even move his legs. He still talks about feeling that sensation and he doesn't name it, but I think it's circulation that he feels. But I don't know for sure, but I, because that's what I feel after I stretch and I rest back, I feel something and it, and it what I'm feeling circulation. So I'm, thinking that may be what he's feeling too. One more deep inhale, notice the difference in your right and left legs or the non-difference. They may feel the same still. Notice your hips, your low back, just observing. Doing our practice consistently and then noticing how, how we become more aware how things may change or not. Uh, bring your strap to your left foot. So in my body, I've got my old army injuries. And when I go to this class, they, I call them all the 20 year olds. They're not all 20 year old though, but some of them are my age and they'll be like really bending over doing this thing. And for years I was like, Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And every time I would hurt my back. And so finally, I had to practice what we call in yoga contentment, santosha. And that's okay that I can't do what my yo other yoga friends are doing. It doesn't really matter. That's not why I'm practicing. So put a little bit of bend in your knee. Try to push your left heel down. Try to sit up strong and long. Deep inhale. Try to keep your shoulders back. As you exhale, keep drawing your abdominal muscles in and hinge forward. Inhale, backing up. Feel as you pull on the strap, it draws your heart forward. Try to keep your ears back as you hinge. Pushing your left heel down. Noticing if this side feels different. Notice all the back muscles that are working here. They don't want to. My back wants to go shrimp, but I work with enough of the older folks in their 80s and 90s and I see that that round in their back and I think oh we don't need to practice that that'll happen naturally so I'm thinking we're practicing yes counteracting that all day good so you could stay here and all the moves with the strap you can do with your hand with your leg low if you want to lift your leg up slide your left hand down Push your right foot down, deep inhale and exhale, lift up. So for me not to lock my knee here, I've got to kind of bend it a little more than you would think. And then I push it forward so those muscles are more active. Try to sit strong and long. And remember, your spine's the most important part. I'd rather see you with your leg lower. Oh, I feel stretched there too then higher with your self rounding. So push your sitting pads down, lift up deep, inhale. If that was enough, you could set your foot down and hold the strap with your right hand. If you wanna keep your leg or re-lift your leg back up, you can hold it with your right hand. Bring your left hand to your low back, push your foot down, 
Push your sitting pads down as you sit long, deep inhale, strong spine, and then rotate over your left shoulder. Deep inhale if you're on the floor. Even if you don't have a strap, you can bring your right hand to your leg, still sitting strong, and then rotating. One more deep inhale. And then slowly unwind. Remove your strap. Rest back in your chair. Keep your strap handy. Let your legs windshield wiper. You can close your eyes all the way or part way and think about exhaling and inhale. And you know, when I say exhale, it may catch you in the middle of the exhale or in the middle of an inhale. So what I do when that happens is I just grab the exhale wherever my teacher is or wherever I'm at just to start that new pattern of exhaling and then inhale. And then go ahead and shift forward. Oh, rewind, lay back. And you can use your strap to bring your right leg in towards your body. So you can wrap it around. I make it, I just kind of don't really cinch it. I just loop it a couple of extra times. You could always use a towel or, and then you're gonna hug your right leg in. You could try use your hands. Lay back in your chair, rotate your hip in one direction. Deep inhales, there I go again. <laughs> and exhale. Rotate the other direction. And exhale. That's a lot to think about, which way to breathe and rotate your leg. Next week, we'll pat our head and chew gum at the same time. One more and release. Keep your strap handy if you want. You're going to sit forward and you're going to be in different places. So if you're in your power chair, you could bring your right foot over to the chair and just gently guide your right leg open. You could stack on one blocks or two blocks or a little stool. Eventually, you might cross over. I was thinking for those of you who have your foot down like this, since it's hard for you to flex your toe, you might wrap your strap around there and use that to try to draw your toes back as you sit up long and hinge. If that's like too much, if you're like, yeah, whatever, Shannon, that's okay. I'll never know. I can't see everybody. Deep inhale. Tyler, if you're on the floor, bring your hug your legs in towards your body as we're hinging forward. Eventually you might cross up higher, but you might not always be up here. So don't get too attached to it wherever you are still trying to push your toes back. And take one more exhale out through your mouth. And then slowly come back up, rest back in your chair. Let your legs windshield wiper and exhale and inhale. Exhale and inhale. Noticing your right and left hip, your right and left low back. Exhale and inhale. And hug your left leg in with your hands or your strap. You can lay back on the floor or if you're in your chair. Rotate in one direction, deep inhales and exhales. If you ever do lay down on the floor, let me know. I try to keep up with the folks who are, but sometimes I get stuck on the chair. Go the other way. And then shift forward and you could flex your toes towards your shin. You might try using your strap. I don't know if that worked for you or not. 
You can stack on blocks, a stool, another chair sometimes. You're still trying to draw your toes back, maybe crossing up higher. Make sure you're not putting too much force on the knee that you're crossing over. Sometimes that happens. So be mindful. Inhale, lift up long through the spine, wherever you are, draw your abdominal muscles in and then reach out and forward. Close your eyes as you inhale back up. Push your right foot down. Sit as strong and long as you can here. You may discover something back there in your left glutes, in your left low back or hips that you don't get when you round forward. One more deep inhale, lifting up. Let's do three exhales out through our mouth. And you'll feel different places when you do round, but one more. A lot of times we're collapsing on nerves when we do that. So trying to be protective of our spine. Or it does go in that way, I know. Uncross your leg, rest back in your chair without your blocks. Let your legs windshield wiper. Notice any subtle changes, feel your abdominal muscles, your ribs, your chest expand. And let's sit forward and finish with a twist. I usually don't call it twist, I say rotations because that sounds so much kinder to our spine to rotate. Twisting sounds icky. So you could squeeze your block. If you don't have blocks, bring your feet and knees together. I'm gonna to try that one just cause it's harder. And I feel like I'm gonna try that now that it's cooling off. I'm gonna amp it up on myself too. So push your feet down, try to squeeze your legs together and bring your left hand to your right leg and your right hand to your low back. Shift your shoulders back over your hips and lift up, telescope the crown of your head up. Then push into your feet, squeeze your knees or your blocks as you rotate to the right. Deep inhale. And slowly unwind. Do the Charleston. It seems like we're having fun when we do the Charleston, at least to me, but you're working your gluteus maximus muscles and a bunch of others. Now zip everything up again, squeeze your blocks or your feet, push your feet down and bring your right hand to your left leg, left hand to your low back. Push your feet down, squeeze your blocks or your knees as you telescope the crown of your head up and exhale, rotate to your left. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head, lift up through your heart, exhale, Try to soften your shoulders as you rotate. One more ginormous inhale. And exhale. Do the Charleston again. Do, 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 do. And then rest back in your chair. You might let your legs windshield wiper a little bit. And then bring your hands to your abdominal muscles again and start to focus on exhaling. See if you can press a little bit more air out and then inhale. Exhale, when you think you've got all the air out, push a little more. We're only gonna do that a couple of times. Expel all your air and then inhale. Think about if you're swimming and you blow the air out, 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 and then inhale when you're ready. And then just start to focus on your natural breath as you exhale and inhale. Exhale and inhale. 
Exhale, just naturally, without effort, just letting your breath flow out naturally and flow in naturally. If your mind drifts, come back to your body, come back to your exhale and inhale. Asking where can I soften? It might be the muscles of your face and jaw. It might be the muscles of your forehead or in the front of your neck. might be your thoughts. Knowing these long pauses, these moments for our body to process what we've done, what movements, what changes the movements, the breathing, the stretching has made in our body today. And then bring your left hand to your heart, your right hand over your left hand, and bow your head towards your own heart. Acknowledge yourself for tending to your body. You have a choice. So thank yourself for starting today right with your yoga. And think of one person, maybe a group of persons that might benefit from these mindful practices, from this deep breathing, from this shift of perspective. each one of you for being here today and practicing and taking care of yourself. Namaste. I'll come unmute you. Oh, was the, my computer sound? I, nobody was waving at me. You're not muted any. Well, it says, it says mute all. Oh, computers. Ask all. I'm, I'm not me anymore, am I? No, you're no. good. Tyler. Wendy we and Tyler so aren't, but I tried to unmute Beth and. We did ourselves. You, they have to yeah. do it themselves. Oh, you they? have to do it yourself. You've got the power. No, <laughs> you don't have to unmute power. yourself either. If Thank you. you. Um, want me to remind you about Monday's class at 4 p.m or today's class at 10. And then we're gonna, on this Thursday, I'm gonna send links out for 10 a.m. I have a, it was like the class was split. Half of the people wanted the 10 a.m. and half wanted the two. So since we didn't have Monday, this Thursday you have a choice of 10 and two. And then I'm gonna see how it pans out after that with my schedule. Cause now that I've got a new computer, I gotta work extra hard and pay Alan. Right. Right. Oh. Did you see the book? Oh, I, good. Yes. So how do I get that to you? The book? Would I, could I put it in your mailbox? Oh, like no, your, I don't have a mailbox over there. I'll Google it. Or I could put it in your driveway or... Well, I don't want you to go to that much trouble. What, you're, are you saying uh, you want to give it away? But... Well, I would you like to loan, loan it, it if not have it. Or you want me to just come loan it, borrow it? You can borrow it or you can... If, you can probably just have it. Okay. Well, but let I me... Think, 
Maybe when what? I'm out over in your area sometime, I'll try to swing by. And okay. Get it. okay. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you. You're welcome. We'll see and you. Beth and Rose, if you, uh, do you have, are you connected to Bob or Wendy? Yeah. I see they, Bob. Both, they both have my email. I can tell you it real quick, but I don't know if you want to take the time to write it down. I know the MS Achievement Center reminds you too, and you may not want a reminder. I was just offering, I didn't want anybody to feel left out because I'm always. But it's the same link every time, right? Yep. Yep, right. I'm going to make the Thursday one the same one too. I thought that made it easy for everybody. Yeah, very easy. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Shannon. All right. Namaste. Okay, so Rose and Beth, if you want me to remind you, um, you're good. You email me or what's your what's your email, Beth? It's Beth Shell, H S H E L L. Okay. Ninety seven at gmail dot com. Okay, very good. I can't do Thursday morning because I'm at MSAC. Okay. Okay. Nice. I may accidentally send it to you, but um, never mind it. <laughs> okay, what about you, Rose? Do you want me to take your email? She's still on mute. You're still muted, darn it. I can't unmute you. Ask to unmute. You have to, uh, Rosemary, you have to push a button to say. Okay. Did I? <laughs> there we go. Okay, because I was going to say, I unmuted it, but. I'm just Rose Ote at Comcast, but I've been using just what they sent us for the month, and I'm assuming it'll be the same every time. No, it's not, because they dropped the Thursday class, and so they only, they're only sponsoring today's class, Tuesday, okay. and then That's on Monday, I, I do a, a class by donation. So you can donate if you want, but you don't have to. And the, and since they canceled the class on Thursday, for now, I'm going to um, offer those to a 10 o'clock and a 2 o'clock. And then I'm probably going to have to cancel one of them, depending on what uh, who else I can get uh, paying gigs from. But I want you guys to have your yoga. So um, I'll tell them to remind you as well. I'll tell them to remind you about my classes because I think they've done that for me before. Because so I, I don't, I do Thursdays all day at MSAC. So okay. I couldn't do it on okay. that date. Okay. I'll send you the Monday one then and the Tuesday okay. one. Okay. okay. Very good. Well, you all Thank you, good. take care. Have a great day. Enjoy Thank this cool you. down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, it feels good. Okay, have a good one. Drink lots of water. Okay. Still recording, Shannon. Oh.